It is the most comprehensive Buffalo Bills at New Orleans Saints preview for you on this crossover episode. Locked on Bills, Locked on Saints. Let's get it. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in, everybody, to this crossover Thursday episode of Locked on Saints and Locked on Bills. We've got Joe Marino at the Joe Marino on Twitter. Myself, Ross Jackson, at Ross Jackson. Nola on Twitter. Locked on Bills. Locked on Saints. Thanks so much for making us your first listen of the day every day. Here to bring you a comprehensive preview for this Thanksgiving game. Joe, how excited are you to have a Thanksgiving matchup between these two teams? Because I love me some Thanksgiving football. I, I love Thanksgiving football, and first of all, happy Thanksgiving to you and happy yours, Thanksgiving, Ross. Happy Thanksgiving, brother. Um, I like watching other football on Thanksgiving. <laughs> it, it really gets complicated when you add the Bills into the layer of the you know the entire dynamics of holidays and you know bouncing around between families, and mm-hmm. you got to got to deal with the team you cover. And so yeah. you know, look, you're basically I, out I, of work, right? <laughs> you do. You got to work. And so uh we'll be up late uh you know getting the the post game reaction podcast and all that stuff taken care of, but I love football on Thanksgiving. I don't necessarily love it what it is the uh Buffalo Bills. <laughs> well, we're going to have us a fun time here previewing this Bills at New Orleans Saints uh game here on Thanksgiving. It's going to be the evening game as you mentioned. We're going to start off with Questions that Joe has for me about the Saints. I've got some questions for Joe. Then we're going to talk through what a win looks like for both of these teams. So, Joe, why don't you go ahead and take it away, man? Let's chat through this Bills and Saints matchup. Appreciate that, Ross. And the first thing I want to ask you about is is this offense and what you expect it to look like on Thursday. It appears they're severely undermanned. I mean, we already know Jameis Winston, Adam Troutman, Michael Thomas. Those guys aren't going to be around, but Alvin Kamara and Mark Mm. Ingram and both the tackles. You know, we're not talking about any tackles. We're talking about the best right tackle in the game and Ryan Ramchek and Taron Armstead, who's one of the best left tackles in the game. And so I'd like to kind of get your thoughts on what you're expecting from this offense on Thursday. How is Trevor Simeon looking? And then if you can just, you know, for, for Bills fans who might not see a ton of Saints football, how does this Taysom Hill wrinkle factor into the equation? Yeah, look, I, I the thing that really kind of stands out first amongst this team going into this matchup is going to be who's playing quarterback this week. Uh, you know, Trevor Simeon has been the guy for the last three weeks, but they've also gone 0 and 3 under him. Yes, he came in against the Buffalo, uh, excuse me, the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers when Jameis Winston was hurt and kind of had this heroic win in New Orleans. But the defense did a big part of that, the pick six to close it out, all of that by PJ Williams. But so I think that when you look ahead to where this team is looking for Thursday, this matchup. You could potentially see Taysom Hill either get a lot more snaps at center or even potentially be the guy. I mean, we'll figure more of that out later on, you know, throughout all of this as we get more injury reports and everything. But the injury report for the New Orleans Saints has been intimidating, to say the least. Right. As you mentioned, you have both of these tackles that are on there. One uh, in Ryan Ramchek has not participated so far this week. You had Teron Armstead, who moved up to uh, limited participation for both of those days. The Saints right now have neither of their starting running backs practicing. So. I think that depending upon the availability and who is able to go, like let's say that Mark Ingram is able to go, I think this team will still very much focus on the run game. And honestly, even if Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara are unable to go, they'll still focus on the run game. Buffalo Bills allowing 4.1 yards per carry, the same as the Philadelphia Eagles. And we saw the Saints really go at the Philadelphia Eagles in the run game as long as they could, right? They had to abandon that eventually because they were in a hole for you know three scores after a bit. So What's going to be important for this team is get out there, score early, try to dictate as much as of, of this game as they can on the ground. It's not going to be the easiest to do, though, because you're dealing with all of these injuries on the offensive line. So the interesting thing about this New Orleans Saints offense is that it comes with caveats the entire way. They can do something really, really special and end up going out there and having this great game. But there are so many different reasons why that might not happen along this roster. Yeah, and I mean, you think about Sean Payton, you think about Sean McDermott, the respective head coaches here. Mm -hmm. These guys know each other. You know, McDermott was in the NFC South for a while with Carolina. And then in 2017, you guys probably remember the Saints destroyed the Bills that season (laughs) and they had 297 rushing yards, 100 each from, you know, Kamara and Ingram. And so when you think about that, when you think about what Jonathan Taylor did Mm -hmm. to the Bills last week and, you know, let's be honest, a deficient situation at quarterback, regardless 
of who's playing and, you know, probably modest weapons for the, the Saints in the passing game. We know the Saints are going to run the football oh, on yeah. Thursday night. So uh, let's shift gears to the defense. Some injuries there, but not nearly as bad. Uh, still impact players at every position of this defense and David Onyemeta and Cam Jordan and Demario Davis, who's one of my favorite players in the NFL. I mean, Marcus yeah. Williams is here. Marshawn Lattimore. I mean, there is star <laughs> power all over this defense. And so uh, what's going right and, and where has the defense shown some vulnerability this year so far? Yeah, look, I, I don't want to play too much into the run game being weak based upon last week's matchup up against the Philadelphia Eagles. And I think that that's kind of the first place that a lot of folks are going that, oh, all of a sudden the Saints run game isn't good anymore. I mean, the Saints gave up over 200 rushing yards to the Philadelphia Eagles last year as well, and it went on to play very well against the run for the rest of the season. So I expect very much that same thing. So I would say the thing that's going right is the front seven, even though they are dealing with some injuries. Peyton Turner, first round rookie. We were there when he got drafted, when we mm -hmm. were covering the draft. And then you have all of the the other defensive ends that are also dealing with injuries. Marcus Davenport, and then you have Tonto Passanio. So there are some injuries along that front defensive line, but they still have a really, really good front there, as you mentioned, Cam Jordan, as well as David Onyemata. And so Demario Davis leads this entire defense. That run game is what's going to be going right, or run defense is what's going to be going right. The thing that actually has been going right over the course of the past few games has been Marshawn Lattimore. Marshawn Lattimore has been pretty subpar over the course of the last few games. Since week seven, he's allowed a pass rating of 156.3. He's allowed some of the most receiving yards in the NFL and the most yards after catch in the NFL as well. So he's been struggling a bit over the course of these last couple of games. And that's not great when you've got the you know revenge game on the way for Emmanuel Sanders potentially yeah. and then of course you've got Stefan Diggs waiting on the other side here too now Marshawn has shown that he can rise to the occasion against elite wide receivers which I believe Stefan Diggs is one of the best in the NFL so would love to see him do that but we'll have to see exactly how it is that he's able to sort of step up to the plate in this one because they're going to need him Ross the the Saints started four and two they dropped their <coughs> last three when you consider what has went wrong as for the team here is they've stumbled is it as simple as saying, well, they've got injuries and they don't have their starting quarterback, or are there some other contributing factors to be mindful of uh, during this uh, three-game skid here? I think there's a, I mean, obviously you can point at the injuries for sure, but I also think that this is a team that shot themselves in the foot a couple of times over the course of the last few games. I mean, missing two extra points, putting you in a situation to where you have to go for two, which the Saints are like 0 for 9 in their last nine attempts over mm. the course of the last couple of years. they're good red zone offense, too. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And they're, they've just not been very good in terms of uh, two-point conversions for whatever reason. And, you know, when they were going up against the Tennessee Titans, they could have tied it up. But then you had, you had the Adam Troutman false start that pushed them back. So then they're going from seven yards out instead of two yards out. So that changes the game, uh, the, the, the play call entirely. Uh, you've had penalties that have caused them issues. You've had mental lapses over on the defensive side as well, just in terms of communication. So I would say that sort of what we have seen over the course of these last few games is a lot of sort of the mental side of the game coming up short. And that's caused the Saints some issues in which they haven't been able to close out games, even though they've been able to storm back in those fourth quarters when the opposing defense is softened. Ross, if I can sneak one more in here mm -hmm. for you. Um, what's interesting about the Saints is the continuity with the coaching staff. It's pretty unreal. You don't see this. Sean Payton, Pete Carmichael, Dennis, Dennis Allen, they've been together for a really long time. And so I want to get your thoughts on that. You think it's been a benefit to the team. Has there been anything about the continuity that has made things a little stale? And the reason I want to bring this up is because the Bills fans right now, a lot of them are doubting the benefits of continuity. And so I wanted to see how you thought it applied to New Orleans and what they've been able to accomplish under Sean Payton. Yeah, look, I've heard some folks talk about you know, and, and even within the New Orleans Saints fan base, uh, that Sean Payton's becoming predictable or Sean Payton's, you know, system or approach has or, or scheme has become, you know, uh, uh, not as surprising and, and, and hasn't been as efficient or effective uh, over the course of this year. And, and I don't know that necessarily that's the case because we've seen this offense, we've seen Sean Payton's system work for 16 years, uh, or I guess 15 years. Uh, and, and, you know, there's a struggle there now. But when you have undrafted free agent wide receivers that are your top receivers you're you know rolling with a third string quarterback right now and Trevor Simeon you're you've lost all these pieces along the offensive line and Andrews Pete Teron Armstead Eric McCoy and Ryan Ramchek for you know various different uh, amounts of time you you know haven't been able to utilize your star player on the offensive side your game breaker and Alvin Kamara over the course of the last two games I think that has more to do with what we haven't seen work for the New Orleans Saints here recently so I don't think that the continuity over the course of time has hurt them. I think that it has helped them in terms of being able to know exactly what they're doing. I mean, they bring people into a culture 
And the thing that they do that's really interesting is that instead of them having individual roles that they fill, running back one through running back three, and these are your lists of responsibilities, sort of the old Bill, Bill Belichick way, the way that they kind of go about it is, what are your strengths and how do we build this team around you and put you in a situation to be able to do what you do well in terms of helping this New Orleans Saints team win? And that's one of the things that's been really unique about the way that they approach the game and something that's been really beneficial. And it's one of the reasons, too, why players want to go to New Orleans. I mean, the Saints have been able to pull some of the top free agents or, or at least free agents that people don't expect in terms of Emmanuel Sanders, uh, Jared Cook, Demario Davis. I mean, those were all huge gets for them uh, as well as more. And I think that that is a huge part of it. So I think the continuity for Buffalo in terms of being able to develop that coaching continuity will over time become really, really beneficial for them as they uh, you know, have sort of this rejuvenation within their franchise right now. And they're a lot of fun to watch. It's Thanksgiving and we know what that means football and nothing goes better with football than turkey and betting and bet online has you covered all holiday season with more props odds and lines than ever before bet online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this thanksgiving go check out their new updated desktop or mobile website and sign up today and you will receive a 50 percent welcome bonus when you use our promo code locked on and it's not just football bet online has pro and college hoops NHL, boxing, UFC, even your favorite Vegas casino games. So don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. And bet online is where we're stuffed with deals this Thanksgiving. All right, y'all, continuing on with this crossover Thursday episode. Happy Thanksgiving to you all. Thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. Locked on Bills. Locked on Saints, got Joe Marino here at the Joe Marino on Twitter. Myself, Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson. Nola Joe, I'm going to go ahead and dive into my questions for you about the Buffalo Bills. And I want to start off here, just sort of talk about this roller coaster season for the Buffalo Bills. What has been the catalyst for sort of the ups and downs for this team so far this season? Yeah, so obviously expectations were very, very high for the Buffalo Bills. And at times they've played to those expectations. And you say, wow, this is a really capable team of being dominant and going out and making a lot of plays and being tough to deal with. You've also seen some situations where the game hasn't gone the way they want it to go. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this Bills team has collectively struggled to adjust and, and, and be able to handle some adversity early in football games when they're not able to step on a football field and just blow opponents away. I mean, if you look over the last couple of years, the Bills have had some very high margin of victory wins. And I'll use the word entitled because I feel like the Bills are a team that when they step on the football field, there's this expectation that it's supposed to go a certain way. Mm -hmm. And this year when it hasn't, they haven't been able to get out of that rut. And you can see the life just kind of gets sucked out of the team. And they, 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 aren't, they aren't able to overcome some adversity that comes their way early in football games. And so they're capable, they're talented, they're tough to deal with. But they have to show that they can be resilient and overcome some adversity and realize that nobody just hands you the victory, right? Like you have right. to go out and do it. And I know these are kind of like elementary, weird talking points to get into. But as we've watched this journey, as we've, as we've watched this Bills team glow up under Sean McDermott and get to this point where a lot of people thought this was a Super Bowl team and for them to kind of show that this year, but also they're six and four. They've lost two of their last three, including one to the Jaguars, nine to six win. They, it just got smoked by the Indianapolis Colts. I think it's kind of fair at this point to question what this team's made of. And mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, I think they're happy that it's a short week and they get to get back on the field and you know try to redefine who they are and change some of these narratives. But right now, I'll be honest, there's a little doubt creeping in about mm -hmm. the toughness and, and overall mental makeup of this team to be able to handle some adversity and be able to adjust when things aren't going their way early in the game. Yeah, it's an interesting thing to watch, especially when you have teams like, I mean, you know, covering the New Orleans Saints this is a team that has managed adversity and sort of has shown a propensity to be able to yeah. do that, but hasn't been able to do it over the course of the last three games, right? It's just been too much. So do you feel like the situations around the Buffalo Bills in terms of what it is that has been too much for them when it comes to adversity are self-inflicted, or is there something else out there that's causing them issues in these games? Yeah, I would say it's a little bit of both. Some of it's mm -hmm. self-inflicted. The Bills are are struggling when it comes to penalties. They're getting a lot called on them this year. Mm -hmm. um, they are having some ill-advised moments in, in in just sequences in games where 
It might be a false start and then a sack. And then all of a sudden you thought you were driving and it's third and 18 or something like that. And you're, 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 you kind of get off that script. And yeah. uh, other times it's situations where uh, the there there's, they, they just don't bounce back. There's just not good complimentary football at times. And so things tend to spiral. The other thing is that there has been some injuries, and I know that mentioning injuries is is probably <laughs> something that Saints fans would laugh about, right? But, I mean, whether it's been some COVID situations with uh, mm-hmm. Spencer Brown at right tackle who forces Daryl Williams to go back out to right tackle and you get worse in two spots, Star Latule, their, you know, their space eater in the middle of the defense, he's been out with COVID. And so, you know, some of that has impacted the team. Tremaine Edmonds, the, the starting linebacker, last, uh, last yeah. two years he was a pro bowler. Uh, he hasn't played the last two weeks, and you can feel it. You can you can sense that you know it's a different group when he's not on the field, right? They they don't have the leader of their defense, and so you know they haven't had the same injury problems as as the Saints and, and a lot of other teams. But those those absences have have shown up. You felt them; it, they've mattered. And so I think there's been some injuries. There's been some adversity, and and you know this team has got to kind of find out what they're made of. Last year, you watched this team; they were so hungry every time they mm-hmm. stepped on the field. I mean. You can see they wanted to impose their will and and they were hunting, right? And they wanted to go out and just be this dominant team. And yeah. I think they kind of expected it to happen this year. And they haven't necessarily found a way to get out of some of the ruts that they found themselves in. Yeah. That defense that you mentioned, I know they've been dealing with some injuries, particularly with Tremaine Edmonds, who, by the way, is one of my favorite linebackers in the NFL that I still don't feel like it's talked about enough, even though he has been a pro bowler over the course of these last couple of years. But this defense has shown a propensity to be really, really good against the pass in game in particular. Yeah. Right now, they're allowing the league's lowest completion percentage. What are they doing to mix things up over on the defensive side? And how might they try to confuse a quarterback like Trevor Simeon, who's been effectively off of the field since 2017 until this season? Well, you've got continuity on the back end. The back seven mm-hmm. of the Bills defense, they've all been together since 2018, and a lot of them since mm-hmm. 2017 with the same secondary coach, the same defensive coordinator, the same head coach. So you have talent, good coaching, and continuity, right? That's a good recipe for for pass defense, especially. There's not any route combinations they haven't seen. They know how to play off of each other. They understand how to layer coverage and space it and squeeze routes. Like, they're very good at that. And so they're sound in, in zone coverage, but then they've started to play a little bit more man on third downs, and you can see them get aggressive and get in the face of receivers at the line of scrimmage. And so they're they're – their defensive scheme in terms of pass defense is evolving with mm-hmm. that continuity, talent, and coaching. So that's been it's been exciting to see. I think when you look at Trevor Simeon, you know w- one thing that as I studied him in preparation of this game, he he drops off when he has to hold onto the football for more than two and a half seconds. So I think it's a situation where you want to try to force him off that first read, force him to move move his eyes, maybe force him off of his platform, and you can see that he unravels a little bit. I think he's only got a completion percentage of 37 percent when he's blitzed this year right and so I think you can get away with sending some extra rushers now to Simeon's credit under pressure he's had some really dynamic throws and in some big moments but I, I will say that you feel like that's probably going to catch up with him a little bit right he's not yeah. he's not a top three passer in the NFL under pressure like he is right now in terms of of quarterback rating and so um it's I think it's a situation where you force him to move his eyes force him to work full field progressions trust the consistency of your secondary and then you have this deep talented defensive line rotation that you've built up and you got a Saints offensive line that has potentially some some backup caliber players and in third stringers let's be honest at tackle yeah, that could potentially sure. have to play and you got to feel good about that recipe to affect Simeon and and really uh make it difficult for the Saints to pass the football yeah worth keeping an eye out on if uh, over at the right tackle position if you end up seeing a guy like Maybe Jordan Mills have to come in. Yeah, in, we know in him. This one. And y'all are very familiar with him. So, <laughs> yeah, the Saints are, uh, you know, really struggling in terms of staying healthy and, and, and maintaining depth over that offensive line. Uh, to wrap us up here with with the uh, line of questioning that I've got for you, uh, I want to talk a little bit about where the Buffalo Bills are headed. You know, for New Orleans Saints fans and those of us that have covered the New Orleans Saints for a while, we've sort of watched this team go through, you know, its resurrection, you know, with Sean Payton and with Drew Brees and with Pete Carmichael. And now, Things are kind of getting, you know, getting getting felt out and sort of figuring things out. Right now, though, the Buffalo Bills are kind of on that upswing. How fun has that been to sort of watch this team get better, uh, be competitive, and be a team that you can have high expectations for? Yeah, it's it's a breath of fresh air after 17 seasons in a row of no playoffs. Sean McDermott gets mm-hmm. hired in 2017. Everyone says this team is tanking. 
Well, they tanked their way to the playoffs in 2017. <laughs> and I think that was important, Ross, to set the foundation. You you think about how important it is for players to trust coaches, to put them in good positions to be successful. Yeah. And when you come in in year one and you are a dumpster fire and you're rebuilding and you like overly embrace the rebuild, can be a little bit of a problem because I don't think you do a good enough job in year one of really setting the foundation and delivering a message that players are going to buy into. So I think that was a critical step in where the Bills are going. Now, in 2018, they had to take their medicine and, and get through some salary cap issues, and, and that set the stage for what we've seen in 2019 and 2020. It's been really fun to watch this team uh, develop. It, it's been really fun to have expectations, to see them get the quarterback situation solved for the first time since 1995. And uh, I'll be I'll be honest, I'm glad I started doing this podcast when I did back in January of 2019 because Ross, it would have been a tough stretch there going through the Rex <laughs> Ryan years, you know, going through Whoa. Dick Duran and Mike Malarkey and all these guys, Doug Marone. Yeah. That would have been some tough conversations to have here on Locked On Bills, so I'm glad I came <laughs> in at the right time. Absolutely. Hey, look, 2017, big-time turning point for both of these franchises, both with great drafts and a big-time turnaround here, and we look for – the New Orleans Saints or the Buffalo Bills maybe be able to further their uh, bid for the playoffs and their bid within their division in this game on Thanksgiving Day. Up next, we're going to talk a bit about what a win looks like for each of these teams. We'll be getting to that here in just a moment. But first, I want to tell you about everything going on with our friends over at Built.com. Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar on the market. If you haven't tried a Built Bar yet, I just have to be honest with you, you're missing out, all right? You're missing out. And right now, this is a great time to go and try those Built Bars because we're not just talking about standard protein bars, right, that are kind of chewy and gritty and hard to choke down and everything. No, we're talking about protein bars that you'd swear you're eating a candy bar, covered in 100% chocolate. And right now on the site at Built.com, 20% off store-wide. This is the time to go ahead and try them if you haven't tried them just yet. Incredible flavors, including some things that might sound like they're packed with sugar, right? Uh, 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 vanilla cream right now they've got up there, blueberry muffin they've got up there, a bunch of their built puff marshmallow bars as well. But we want to talk about four or five grams of sugar, four or five grams of net carbs while you're getting 17, 18 grams of protein. So head over to the site today, built.com, get that 20% off store wide. Don't forget to use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off as well. That's 15% off with promo code LOCKED15 over at built.com, the best protein, the best protein bar on the market. All right, everybody, we are wrapping up this crossover Thursday, Thanksgiving edition, Locked on Bills, Locked on Saints crossover for you. Joe Marino, Locked on Bills, myself, Ross Jackson, Locked on Saints. So, Joe, let's start with the visiting team here. Buffalo Bills coming to town in New Orleans, going to see if they're going to be able to grab the turkey leg, or I don't know if they're still doing like the three-legged turkey or whatever. I'm sure they're still doing something like that, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> these guys are going to be looking to have a little bit of Thanksgiving dinner after this game. What do the Bills have to do in this one to get a win and be able to celebrate over that weird turkey? Yeah, I think it starts with being able to stop the run. Um, we know mm -hmm. the Saints are going to want to run the football. We, we talked already about what happened in 2017, the familiarity between McDermott and, and Peyton, uh, what the Colts did to the Bills last week, the deficiencies that the Saints have right now in the passing game, they're going to want to run the football. Mm -hmm. And that means that the Bills are going to have to defend it. And to be honest, entering last week against the Colts, the Bills were third in the NFL in yards per carry allowed on the ground, right? Like they haven't been a disaster of a run defense. And so they have to get back to some of those fundamentals that have made them successful stopping the run in the pass. And I think when you have a situation like this where we're talking about the best receivers being Traquan uh, Smith and, and Marquez Callaway. I don't think anyone's going to sit here and pound the table as those being, you know, number one receivers or you know, really desirable number two receivers. I think you have to force the Saints and invite the Saints to throw the football. I mean, I'm talking eight man boxes, whatever you need to do to say no, you're not running the ball, and we'll take our chances with our secondary against your passing game. And I think that's a recipe that the Bills have to embrace and. That that's first and foremost, and then secondly, the Bills need to embrace a different game script. I've, I've kind of alluded to this. They don't walk. You don't walk onto the field and you're not up twenty-one to nothing immediately. You have right. to earn that. And so, just understand it's a sixty-minute game, and and drives that end in a kick or, or they're not bad, right? A mm -hmm. extra point, a field goal, a punt. That's okay. Just keep playing. I think that you, you have a, a a real situation here where I think the Bills are a more talented football team right now, based on 
the injuries that the Saints have. Mm -hmm. And so if you embrace a normal game script, you don't beat yourself. They keep score the whole time. You like to feel like at the end of it, you can have more points than the Saints. I think, you know, kind of in, in a very simple, elementary way of talking about this game. And I and I I can go into all kinds of scheme and X's and O's, right? right? But I just feel like it's more of a mindset for this Bills football team more than anything right now. Just embrace the game script, keep playing, and see what happens at the end of 60 minutes. And I think I think the Bills, if, if they do that, if they don't implode, they'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Look, that that's really familiar in terms of what the New Orleans Saints are going to need as well. I mean, yes, in order for them to win, it's going to have to effectively be the opposite of what you just mentioned, right? That's how the Bills win. The opposite is how the Saints win. They have to be able to run the football, but it's going to be a little challenging if they don't have Mark Ingram, if they don't have Alvin Kamara, which at the time of us recording this, we don't know yet. Are they going to have to move forward with Tony Jones Jr. and Ty Montgomery? Because if so, you're not really going to be putting up a big rushing attack in that situation. Yes, Ty Montgomery had over 100 rushing yards in Week 17 up against the Carolina Panthers last year, but that was a P.J. Walker-led Carolina Panthers team that wasn't playing for anything at the end of the season, right? So there's a very, very different situation than two actively engaged uh, teams right now that are fighting within their division and that are fighting within their conference for playoff seating and playoff positioning. So for me, they have to be able to figure out this run game regardless of who's who the running back is. And ideally they get one of Mark Ingram more likely than Alvin Kamara back for this one. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're able to produce a bit on the ground, but the saints are not going to be able to reliably throw the football. And we've seen that over the course of this season so far, even when it was Jameis Winston under center, these receivers had a lot of trouble with separation. They had a lot of trouble with spacing. You know, Marquez Calloway is somebody that kind of got everybody very excited with those couple of big plays against the Jacksonville Jaguars in the preseason. But then he's come into the uh, the season here so far, and he's being asked to run this X receiver route tree, which for the Saints includes a lot of in breaking routes, out breaking routes. I mean, he has to do a lot of quick cuts, but he rounds everything off. I mean, this guy is like he's cruising down the causeway more than he is actually like, you know, making these cuts the way that you would see Michael Thomas do. And so that has been a big issue just in terms of being able to generate that separation and be able to be where he needs to be and where Trevor Simeon is expecting him to be as well. So we've seen all of these sort of different uh, versions of what has made it so complicated for the Saints in the passing game. And either they're going to have to be able to do it effectively or they're going to need to be OK staying away from it because the run, running game is cooking. The other thing here is that they have to they have to do something in the first three quarters. This New Orleans Saints team quarters one through three is a vastly different team than quarter four. And we have seen that time and time again going into the game up against the Philadelphia Eagles. Trevor Simeon's pass rating was like 84 in the first three quarters, which isn't terrible, but not great. And then in the fourth quarter, it was up to 124. Right. So he has really, really been able to settle in. When, you know, teams have a two score lead, a three score lead, and they're playing off coverage and you're seeing cover two shells and two deep shells, and they're just basically giving you what you want at that point, right? They're playing soft, they're protecting a lead. And so I think that that is something that the New Orleans Saints have to be able to flip the script on. It's going to be hard to do on a short week. Buffalo, of course, also dealing with a short week. So it's not that like it's unfair for the Saints here, but it's going to be really interesting. And I think the last thing is going to be being disciplined and hoping that Buffalo isn't disciplined, right? that Buffalo has sort of those mental mistakes and that the crowd puts them in a position to where they have these sort of procedural penalties, false starts, delay of games, things like that. And they'll have to be able to take advantage of that. In in the the uh, Buffalo Bills loss to the Jaguars, I think they had like 12 penalties, if I remember correctly. A lot. And then, yeah. And then over the course of the last few games, you've seen pretty steadily around seven or so over the past couple of games. And so they have to be able to take advantage of that if they end up getting that opportunity. You know, you mentioned be, the Bills having those drives and all of a sudden it's third and 18, right? They're driving and then they back themselves up some way or another. The Saints are going to have to be able to do that. And then the defense, it, it has to come down to the stars playing like stars. Marshawn Lattimore has to get back up and step up to the plate. Demario Davis has to be able to lead this team uh, from his spot. And this defensive line has to find a way to be disruptive. They really, really struggled against the read option up against the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Josh Allen is one of those guys that is mobile and can be one of those pesky runners, and he makes it very much a part of his game. The Saints are going to have to be able to limit that as well. So the fact of the matter, Joe, is that in order for the Saints to win this game, a lot has to go right. And maybe it's the holiday season. Maybe that happens because it's the holiday season. The Saints right now undefeated over the past three seasons on holiday games, Christmas, Halloween, Thanksgiving. This could be the first loss. 
But, you know, if there's going to be any type of holiday magic, they're going to need it on Thanksgiving Day. Should be a good one. Two hungry football teams, two teams that need a win. And um, the national spotlight is going to be on this game. And so yep. big one for both teams on Thursday night. Absolutely. It's going to be a lot of fun. And this was a lot of fun, Joe. Thank you so much for taking the time to get this crossover Thursday in Locked on Bills, Locked on Saints. Everybody listening, thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day here on the show for your second listen. Go and check out Locked on Bets. Win yourself some money. Right now, the Saints are, I believe, at six-point underdogs at home in this one. So, you know, go ahead and check out what your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling have to say about this game and many, many more around the Thanksgiving holiday. We appreciate y'all very much for coming through for today's episode. Happy Thanksgiving to you all. Joe, happy Thanksgiving to you, my friend. And, uh, you know, we, we got you covered here, continuing on every Monday through Friday here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.